Did you see the Dune trailer came out today? The what? Dune trailer. No, what's that? The book Dune? No Thank idea. Not a not a clue. Not no, a clue it's at a all. Big sci-fi. Oh. Yeah, it's about the spice, you know. Did I get the spice? I don't know any of the words that you are saying to me right now. We thought we would do this live uh, because we were going to probably do more of these videos anyway and so why not give people the opportunity to get out of the house, get a babysitter and have a date night. Super fun date night coming to listen to two uh, priests talk uh, and also do it online for those who uh, would like to remain at home. Um, the idea of this has always just been a casual conversation in hopes for the people of our parish, one, uh, to maybe get to know us on a more personal level because you know, it's one, I mean, the most important thing that we do is very impersonal, saying the Mass, hearing confessions, etc. But it helps to also know your priests on a personal level so you can kind of connect a bit more. And we like to know you on a personal level too. Uh, and also then, uh, more importantly, to, you know, talk about some uh, matters of faith, matters of the church, life in the world, uh, and answer any questions or a variety of questions that folks have. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So um, I think what we'll do is start uh, with a question that was submitted online, and then um, anyone that has any questions after that, feel free to ask. And there's also more online submitted questions, and those who are viewing online can also ask questions. Uh, but first of all, I want to know, Father Scott, do you know anything about uh, refrigeration and freezer repair? <laughs> Such a trolling question. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, my freezer was unplugged. <laughs> was unplugged. Was unplugged. It did it itself. <laughs> Mysteriously unplugged <laughs> yeah. for a number of days. And uh, it smelt a little bit. <laughs> so that was our project for today, for a couple of hours. I came into the house and Father Scott's like frantically taking all of the frozen, well, no longer really frozen venison and trying to Resurrect. assess whether it was <laughs> still <laughs> edible. <laughs> Do a little smell test. Yes. We'll be good. But uh, more importantly, uh, recently, perhaps uh, all of you, I'm sure, have seen or heard maybe that um, the bishops of Wisconsin and also Bishop Hine mm -hmm. have announced that uh, the dispensation from the Sunday obligation is going to be lifted in the Diocese of Madison. That will be lifted on September 27th, whatever that weekend. Correct. Yes. Yeah. 27th, 28th, 26th, 27th, whatever it is. Um, so... That is, you know, a matter of interest. But I think first off, can you can we talk about? Could you talk about what is the Sunday obligation itself, and what's the point of the Sunday obligation? So the Sunday obligation stems from the third commandment: is to keep the Lord's day holy. And so, following Scripture, you know, which it states three times in the Gospels and once in Corinthians, you do this in remembrance of me. So it's not doing something else, but to do this in remembrance of me, and ultimately to relive in some sense, but to offer sacrifice to God through this holy mass. So taking, breaking, or blessing, breaking, and offering this sacrament, or this body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord back to God the Father. Mm. So that is the Sunday obligation that we are to come and to participate with uh, in the fullest possible way that we can, and that's in the mass itself through the priest. Uh, and to do that, not just merely virtually, but to do that in person mm -hmm. when we are able to. Mm -hmm. so, it's so even before COVID and before the, the obligation was dispensed, those who have a just cause for not being able to attend Mass, such as like if you're very ill or bedridden, or if you're ill and contagious, or, you know, if you're, you know, whatever, things like those things yeah, already absolutely. would have applied. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. And so with the reinstation, reinstatement of the Sunday obligation, those things still apply. And, and Bishop clarified that as well. You know, so no one who is ill or of, you know, extremely vulnerable health and, and fearful of going out is obligated on, you know, on pain of sin to come to Sunday Mass. Correct. Yes. And even to the point of like, if you are a caretaker for somebody who is extremely ill, and a compromised immune system, like somebody severely sure. compromised. Right. And any cold, a little cold, or anything like something of that small you bring back, and that would be detrimental to that person's life, would 
be equally justified. So it's not just the person that's ill, right. but somebody that has, is taking care of that person who isn't in an extreme state mm -hmm. would also be exempt. Right, right. So what is, like, what is your words of encouragement then to the faithful about returning to Sunday Mass? Is to see, well, first thing, I mean, to see this is the greatest moment of your week. It's the greatest moment of your life to be every single weekend, to be there participating in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It's not truly what you get out of it. It's what you are able to give to God in perfect worship of him for the entire week. And so that's the encouragement that I would give first and foremost to see this is a true gift that I can place uh, that I'm able to receive from God to be able to participate in it, but that I'm also able to give to God. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's as if the church is obliging us to do the thing that's best for us, you know. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a funny thing to, to speak of it as an obligation because, in fact, when we come to the Mass, you know, we receive a great gift. Uh, it's like you're obliged to receive the greatest thing you could ever receive, you know, to be present at the Mass and receive body, blood, soul, and divinity our Lord in the Eucharist. Um, so that, you know, the obligation to attend Sunday Mass is not meant to be just, a, you know, a, a, a rule that, you know, burdens us and places restrictions on our lives, but rather, you know, uh, the church is called our mother for a reason. It's the, the mother leading her children to what is best. Mm -hmm. right? And so the law is in accordance with that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, someone present here asked about our experience as priests going from uh, when uh, public masses were canceled to now kind of returning back to having more people and what what just that was like, you know, with having kind of our congregation, you know, all of a sudden disappear, not really disappear, but, you know. Uh, so, I, you know, for me, it was very bizarre because normally, I mean, that's, I think, for everybody, but normally it's very lively here on Sundays. Uh, normally it's very lively here every day of the week, generally, but uh, particularly on Sundays, so it was just a strange feeling. As priests, we, we pretty frequently celebrate Mass privately, alone. Mm -hmm. You know, like if we have a day off or, you know, there's three of us here and some days there's, you know, if there's only two Masses, then one priest isn't scheduled for a public Mass, so would celebrate a Mass privately. So we do that, you know, relatively frequently. Um, and it's actually kind of nice every now and then because, you know, you get to kind of take your time and pray the Mass a bit more intently without, you know, thinking about all of the people staring at you and the server and this and that, you know, it's nice every now and then. Uh, but it's, you know, when, when you were called by God to be a parish priest that, you know, necessarily involves <laughs> being a pastor or a shepherd for people. So it gets a little, uh, it got very weird. I was, felt insane, which I think I said, like in almost every homily I gave to the empty yeah. church, I feel like an insane person right now. Cause you're just speaking to an empty church and the camera's like way, way back there. And, so the question is, what is the domestic church and how has the family grown during this time away? Or where have we, where have we seen the strengths in particular families? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think hopefully, and I've heard some stories that, that it did, certainly gave some families some opportunity, first and foremost, just to have more time together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're very busy these days, especially if you have kids, you're always busy. Uh, it's, it seems like to me, I don't have any myself. Um, <laughs> And, you know, you know, and occupied with all sorts of different like activities and stuff. And, you know, so I think I, I've heard some stories from families. that It was just nice to be able to have a bit more family time. Uh, that was early on, in, I yes, think, after so like a early. few months, you know. But I mean, you had Boy Scouts, you had, you know, sports, basketball, you had whatever sporting events. And mm -hmm. All those things are good. Yes. But when you have all of them in your family and then all of a sudden they all get stripped away, mm -hmm. you're like, you have an opportunity to say, like, yeah. this is a family time that I didn't have before, and exactly. there's good out of that as well. Yeah, and I think spiritually, too, for some families, I heard a story from one family that um, they, they just weren't really driving with watching Mass online, yeah. which is understandable because, like, that's the same TV that you watch, you know, movies and sports and whatever. So then to, like, turn that into a time of prayer can be very hard for kids. Uh, understandably so. So this family just decided that instead they were just going to have like their own home liturgy. And uh, so they read the readings. They had like one kid read each reading and then, um, you know, like all say some pray like things that they wanted to pray for, for the general intercessions or whatever, said the creed. And the coolest part though is that dad basically gave a sermon 
every week, uh, which I don't know how much. The, yeah. Like <laughs> I don't the know. The the I don't know. Yeah. Time. I mean, like, I don't know if the kids loved that or what, but. But uh, I think it's a beautiful thing, you know, to like... Do your chores, <laughs> yes. boys and girls. <laughs> Here are the reasons why God demands you to do your chores. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I think that's a sort of uh, beautiful kind of manifestation of what we call the domestic church, the church in the home. Uh, because it is, you know, parents are the first teachers of the faith. Yeah. And the home is, the family is sort of, it is a little church. It is a little community of faith. Um, and it's where you get to practice being priest, prophet, and king. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, just as the church is structured in a hierarchy, so too a family is structured in a hierarchy and for good, right? That mom mm-hmm. and dad are in charge, not the kids. And, uh, you know, and, and, I, and the, the domestic church is, is as is the, the family itself, an image of, of the Holy Trinity. Because the family is suppo- supposed to be, you know, a communion of love, which is what God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit mm-hmm. exist in a perpetual communion of love. And, um, you know, if, if uh, it's, I guess in my experience working with the youth, which I've done a lot of, that if uh, the faith isn't reinforced at home, even if, even, you know, if the parents are perhaps trying, just unsure how, then it doesn't really stick as much as like learning at school or perhaps it's like a mission trip or summer camp, mm-hmm. you know, but w- the home is really where I think children learn uh, to love God, uh, because you learn to love and be loved in a family, and from there you can learn to love and be loved by God. So the question was, what advice do we have for families to continue kind of incorporating the, the life of prayer and faith in the domestic church when things get back to normal? Um, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I think what I would say is, um, is that routine in prayer is very, very important for all of us, yeah. um, but I think especially for kids. Um, if kids learn kind of a routine of prayer, whether that's like in the morning when they get up or at night before you go to bed, and we say these prayers and you know do these same things, it kind of ingrains a habit, uh, which is uh, a really beautiful thing. It can be just a, a beautiful thing for the whole family to know that like, yeah, every night uh, before bed, we you know get together and say five Hail Marys and you know, thank God for the gift of this day, you know, whatever it is. Um, I think that, uh, you know, is a good starting point, uh, most certainly, for kind of forming uh, more intentionally the domestic church in the home. And I would say, too, just like, you know, don't be afraid to be bold. And, you yes. know, because, uh, I mean, I can speak for myself. When I was a kid, I probably, if my parents had come to me and said, okay, we're going to pray together every night this way. I, you know, at some point I would have been like, yeah, I'm kind of over that. I'm not doing it, you know, because <laughs> kids are rebellious and I, I was. Um, but don't, aff- you know, don't be afraid to be bold, you know, just as, as we were talking about with the Sunday obligation that the church as a mother ob- obliges us to do what's best for us, you know. So too, you know, as parents, you have an opportunity um, to guide your kids in a really beautiful way in the life of holiness. So the question is, what do we plan during the pandemic here? We've, music has had to cease in some capacity. Uh, and now the parish uh, has a new director of music. And so what is our plan for the music for mass and liturgies going forward uh, under Marco, uh, who's the new music director? Good question. <laughs> I think we're figuring it out yet. Uh, but no, I think it's as we have in the past, uh, music, there's a long tradition of music within the church, uh, contemporary to very traditional, to Gregorian chant, to, um, there's a lot of names I'm missing. Polyphony. Polyphony. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, to antiphons, to, um, could be anything. And so I think Marco and as a parish as well as to be able to, offer all of those varieties and options and to like just bring that give the depth and beauty of the music within the tradition of the church and currently in the church as well uh to bring that to our parish yeah and i think you know just regards to like the purpose of sacred music as with anything in the liturgy it's meant to elevate our minds and hearts to be able to join ourselves to christ and making that offering to god uh and you know, so the music, the purpose of sacred music is that it's, you know, sometimes we think like, well, I like this one or I don't like this one. Um, 
But you know, the real question is, is this piece of music, is this uh, going to help elevate my mind and heart to be able to make an offering to God? Uh, music, you know, just in general has a great effect on the soul uh, in, you know, in, on our minds and hearts, right? Mm -hmm. we, you know, songs get stuck in our head. They influence the way we think and feel. And uh, different types of music are appropriate for different, you know, types of uh, settings, right? We're not going to, like, you know, play Metallica at Mass or, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, maybe, probably maybe. not. No. Maybe. Um, Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett, yeah, <laughs> wasting away at Margaritaville at Matt. Yeah, probably not, not that. Um, so I think, I think any, you know, this is the first time I'm, in a long time, at least, that the parish has had a full-time person exclusively yeah. just to be the director of music. And so Marco is able to put a lot of time and energy uh, and, you know, first and foremost, playing at every single Mass on the weekends and uh, currently singing as well uh, and then getting some choirs uh, more choirs established and things like that in order just to serve the pair so that, you know, uh, we can create the best environment for worship of God. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the goal. Uh, every time we step out there on Sunday for Mass, the goal is to help, well, first and foremost, for us to offer the sacrifice of Christ and to help all of you join in that and join in that well as best as we possibly can in our frail humanity. And music is one of those things that can help do that, especially, yeah. um, you know, if it's done beautifully. So, final fun question is, uh, you know you're going to die and you get to have one last meal. Uh, what is it? And I want main dish, side dish, appetizer, and drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who thinks of this? You, you don't think about this? I think about this all the time. Like, if I were going to die, what would I eat right now? If I was going to die right now, what would I eat right now? I know this is my last meal ever. And you're not going to eat in heaven or hell. It's your last chance. Last chance? Yeah. Can I just go to a restaurant and like... Yeah, but what are you, <laughs> what are you ordering? <laughs> and like, whatever the chef's special is for the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if the like, chef's special is like liver and onions or something? That's delicious. So what's wrong with that? Okay, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the raw guy. Uh, what would be the best dish? I would have a 24-ounce dry-aged ribeye. Dry-aged? No, you don't want dry-aged. Yes, I do. No, why? I, it, this it's is dry. my last it's meal dry. before it's I die. Dry. My know? last meal before I die. <laughs> not yours. <How> not <laughs> yours. I want a 24-ounce dry-aged ribeye. All right. Cooked medium rare. I want, as an appetizer, I want escargot. Oh my gosh, it's, what? This isn't your last meal. This you already my... have butter all over your steak. I'm gonna die anyway. And you're gonna have butter <laughs> all over your escargot. I'm already, no, I know I'm gonna die, it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Escargot, uh, side dish, I would have a loaded baked potato. And to drink, I would have Pappy Van Winkle bourbon. Pappy Van Winkle. It's like oh, the yeah, hardest, it's yeah. like, it costs like $3,000 a bottle on eBay. Okay. Yeah. So. Very good. Well, I think that, uh, We'll wrap it up there. We will do this again in a month. Uh, thank you all for coming and tuning in. Know that uh, we have been and will continue to pray for it all uh, during these strange and difficult times. And we are glad to be seeing more of you at Sunday Mass. I look forward to continuing that. Um, it is our joy to serve you. That's what we're here for. So God bless you all. Have a great God night. Bless.